next guest just spent 48 hours on the ground in Israel. In fact, he just got back a few hours ago. And Pastor Steve Berger is here uh, from Grace Chapel. Yes, Great sir. to have you here. Thank you, Mike. You tired? Happy to be here. A little jet lag. A little bit, yeah. So tell us what's really going on over there. People are just uh, inflamed after we yeah. saw a rocket go into a, a school. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the images that came out of that were horrifying. Yeah. Well, first, I want to say the IDF, Israeli Defense Forces, are doing a job that isn't getting enough attention. Uh, the length of compassion and clarity um, and, and warnings. Warnings. Listen, I've, I've listed seven different things. Okay, so they start off um, with leaflets. They follow that up with phone calls and text messages. Uh, they're sending drones to make sure that the buildings are clear. Uh, after that, they're doing the roof knocker. After that, they're releasing bombs that if they see civilians on the ground, they're recalling and redirecting the bombs themselves. Six, they're sending in humanitarian aid. And seventh, they're actually treating enemy combatants who are- On the opposite side, what's Hamas doing? It's Hamas is sending their children out as a, as a human shield. So, so what kind of propaganda do you feel like they're trying to put out there, and are they succeeding? They are succeeding, and it's what even President Bill Clinton said last week, that their strategy, okay, is to get the international media to buy in to the, the murdering of children. How do you combat that? Well, we have to speak the truth. And so that's what we're here to do today, and many others are just telling the truth. The Israeli Defense Forces are doing an unbelievable job of trying to prevent as many civilian casualties as possible. Now, the cease it's unprecedented in war. This little mini uh, ceasefire, I, I thought it went into effect at 1 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, so it's gonna go to 1 o'clock this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, should there be a ceasefire? It doesn't seem like Israel wants a ceasefire because they'd like to go in and get the job done and clear out these tunnels. Yeah, they do want to get the job done, and they do need to clear the tunnels out. So they've made tremendous progress. Uh, thank God there's been as little um, casualties as possible. It could have been much worse, which people don't understand. This could have been much worse than it is. But again, because of the great job the IDF is doing, casualties are actually considerably less than they could be. Well, that Iron well, Dome is very effective. I saw it in action. It's, it's yeah. very, very... So, yeah, a 90% success rate, something 90%. like that. But it's very expensive, too. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think, uh, Israel? It's cheaper than the cost of life, though. Well, oh, yeah. well, you can't put a price tag on that, <laughs> right? What do you think Israel needs to do uh, in the meantime and, and make themselves um, appear to the Nash international media mm -hmm. as, as just simply trying to protect themselves? They need to keep doing what they're doing, which is preventing as, as much um, civilian casualties as possible. And they need to keep telling the truth about what they're doing and what lengths they're going to to prevent that loss of life. Well, you saw it firsthand. I just something in 15 seconds. Madeleine Albright this week said that uh, Israel's overreaching, still building, building, building. What happened to the two-state solution? I'm sorry, I missed that. Okay, we are, we are done answer. <laughs> I should have warned you that I was going to mention that quote from her. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Thanks for coming in. Happy to be Especially here today. Thank you.